The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. This morning we read together from Genesis chapter 34 and 35. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, who she had born to Jacob, went out to visit the women of the land. When Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, the ruler of that area, saw her, he took her and raped her. His heart was drawn to Dinah, daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. And Shechem said to his father, Hamor, Get me this girl as my wife. When Jacob heard his daughter Dinah had been defiled, and his sons were in the fields with the livestock, so he did nothing about it until they came over. Then Shechem's father, Hamar, went out to talk to Jacob. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons had come in from the fields. As soon as they heard what had happened, they were shocked and furious, because Shechem had done an outrageous thing in Israel by sleeping with Jacob's daughter, a thing that should not be done. But Hamar said to them, My son Shechem has his heart set on your daughter. Please give her to him to marry as a wife. Intermarry with us, give us your daughters, and take our daughters for yourselves. You can settle among us, the land is open to you. Living it, trading it, and acquire property in it. Then Shechem said to Dinah's father and brothers, Let me find favour in your eyes, and I will give you whatever you ask. Make the price for the bride, and the gift I am to bring as great as you like, and I'll pay whatever you ask. Only give me the young woman as my wife. Because their sister Dinah had been defiled, Jacob's sons replied deceitfully as they spoke to Shechem and to his father Hamar. They said to them, We can't do such a thing. We can't give our sister to a man who is not circumcised. That will be a disgrace to us. We will enter into an agreement with you on one condition only, that you become like us by circumcising all your males. Then we will give you our daughters and take your daughters for ourselves. We'll settle among you and become one people with you. But if you do not agree, to be circumcised, we'll take our sister and go. Their proposal seemed good to Hamor and to his son Shechem. The young man, who was most honoured of all his father's family, lost no time in doing what they said because he delighted with Jacob's daughter. So Hamor and his son Shechem went to the gate of their city to speak to the men of the city. These men are friendly towards us, they said. Let them live in our land and trade in it. The land has plenty of room for them. We can marry their daughters and they can marry ours. But the men will agree to live with us as one people, only on the condition that all our males be circumcised, as they themselves are. Won't their livestock, their property and all their other animals become ours? Let's agree to their terms and let them settle among us. All the men went out of the city gate and agreed with Hamar and his son Shechem, and every male in the city was circumcised. Three days later, while all of them were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords and attacked the unsuspecting city, killing every male. They put Hamar and his son Shechem to the sword and took Dinah from Shechem's house and left. The sons of Jacob came upon the dead bodies and the looted city where their sister had been defiled. They seized their flocks and their herds and their donkeys and everything else of theirs in the city and out in the fields. They carried off all their wealth and all their women and children, taking as plunder everything in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me by making me obnoxious to the Canaanites and parasites, the people living in the land. We are few in number, and if they join forces against me and attack me, I and my house will be destroyed. But they replied, Should he have treated our sister like a prostitute? Much in this chapter, one thing that I noticed right away is no one asked the young woman her opinion. Decisions were made for this young woman without any reference to her and what she wanted and what she desired. It speaks a lot about patriarchy uh, in the Bible, but also we must be careful that we, when we are making decisions, uh, don't overrule. Those who the decisions affect directly, we speak to them. Then there's the whole situation of uh, 
the the deal with the city. They could, of course, have spiritualized this and said, "Oh, look, God has made space for us in the land. Let's intermarry with these people." But instead, they uh, maintained the purity that they must maintain and defended the honor of their sister. The rights and wrongs of that belong to an ancient time, a previous uh, time in human history where uh, there were there were people that had to take the law into their own hands. There was no uh, law uh, enforcement agencies. It's hard to judge times like that from the present. Chapter 35. Then God said to Jacob, go up to Bethel and settle there. Build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and all who were with me, get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves, change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel, where I will build an altar to God, who answered me in the day of my distress and who has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings in their ears, and Jacob buried them under the oak at Shechem. They set out and the terror of God fell on all the towns around them, so no one pursued them. Jacob and all the people with him came to Luz, that is Bethel, in the land of Canaan. There he built an altar and called the place El Bethel, because it was there God had revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and was buried under the oak outside Bethel. So it is named Alam Bekal. After Jacob had returned from Paddan Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you, and kings will be among your descendants. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac I will also give to you. I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he talked with him. Jacob set up a stone pillar at the place God had talked with him. He poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it. And Jacob called the place where God had talked with him Bethel. Jacob returned to the place where he heard God's voice and made offerings to God, often spiritually too. We need to learn, return to the place where we were close to God. Sometimes we drift away from our relationship with the Lord. We need to return to him uh, and allow God to speak fresh into our lives. Reassure us, give us confidence in his promise. Verse 16. Then they moved from Bethel. While they were still some distance from Ephra, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't despair for you have another son. She breathed out her last, for she was dying. She named her son Ben-Oni, but his father named him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. Over her tomb, Jacob set up a pillar, and to this day that pillar marks Rachel's tomb. Israel moved on again and pitched his tent beyond Migdal Edor. While Israel was living in that region, Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine, Pilhar, and Israel heard of it. Jacob had twelve sons, the sons of Leah, Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishkar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, the sons of Rachel's servant, Bilhar, Dan, and Naphtali, the sons of Leah's servant, Sipha, Gad, and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob, who were born to him in Padan Aram. Jacob went home to his father Isaac, king Men, near Kareth Arab, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had stayed. Isaac lived 180 years. He breathed his dust and died and was gathered to his people, old and full of years. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. We simply have an account here of the list of uh, Jacob's sons and also this comment that uh, when Benjamin was born his mom wanted to call him his mother wanted to call him Ben Oni son of my trouble because of the pain and difficulty she had in childbirth but his father named him 
Benjamin, son of my right hand. A much more positive name. It's important that when we give names, when we think of people, we think of them not simply in the negative, but we try and think positive things of people too. And uh, Jacob would not have wanted to be reminded of the, of the pain of his wife in giving birth to his son, but wanted to exalt his son and give him a position um, of, the, the, of respect within his family. Lord, we lift up to you this day. And Lord, we seek your blessing upon, upon us. Lord, we pray that in all we do, we may honour you. We may keep ourselves pure from the people of this world and bring honour and glory to you. Lord, we lift up to you the uh, affairs uh, that we will engage in, the business that we will do, the people who we will meet. Lord, we pray that in everything we do, we will bring honour and glory to your name. Lord, we pray that you will be glorified indeed in our lives today. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>